Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in the past, people have asked me what the difference between Arduino and Raspberry Pi is. And I've said that Arduinos are good for doing things like creating sensors or being able to trigger uh, physical events. But if you're going to do something like run a web server, then you should really use a Raspberry Pi. And of course, as things go in the technology world, <laughs> you actually can't kind of sort of can do a web server off of an Arduino. So today I'm going to show you using an Ethernet shield how to run a website off of your Arduino. So basically you have an Ethernet shield that's connected to your Arduino and that Ethernet shield has a micro SD card slot on that so you can put a micro SD in there and essentially read from the micro SD in order to present a website to whoever would be going to the IP address of your Arduino. Now I will say, <laughs> I will say more or less more or less, I still stick by my previous opinion. If I'm gonna be running a web server, uh, the least I would want is a Raspberry Pi. But, you know, for some reason, there might be a reason that you would want to use an Arduino in order to deliver a website uh, from, from simple, simple things, such as it's harder to hack something like an Arduino. Since an Arduino doesn't have a full-fledged operating system, since it doesn't have MySQL or PHP or any of that kind of stuff, uh, it, it's not necessarily as large of, of an attack risk as something like a Raspberry Pi might be. But, on the other hand, you know, you can only do what you can do with, with, with this. So basically, when you're using an Ethernet shield in order to deliver a web page uh, to clients, uh, what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to send any type of web page type stuff that would be client side interpreted. So what I mean by that is HTML, right? So it sends the HTML text and then your web browser turns that HTML into a website. JavaScript, JavaScript is a client side uh, scripting language. So it sends the text to your client and then your client parses what to do with it. So you can, use, again, obviously you can use HTML, you can use CSS, you can use JavaScript, those type of languages using Arduino if you really want to. Uh, but do realize uh, any kind of server side scripting languages, uh, we're talking about Python, PHP, Ruby, any of that type of thing, uh, you shouldn't try to run off of an Arduino. Again, that is that is one of those, at least a Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to show you how to do today is we're going to use a, uh, we're going to create a simple uh, text website. So this will be an HTML website. And on that, I will embed an image from failnormal.com. And I will also embed a video from YouTube. Uh, so this shows you how to, to basically do a simple website and be able to embed uh, assets from other web properties, whether it's YouTube, whether it's something like Imgur or websites, something like that. Now you can, to be clear, you actually can host uh, host pictures and such on the micro SD and be able to present them on a website, uh, but that gets a little bit convoluted and and I think it gets to be a little bit complicated. So for in this, uh, this particular video, all we're going to be doing is a simple text website where all of the assets are hosted somewhere else. Again, YouTube or failnormal.com, something like that. So with that, let's go over to the workbench so I can show you how to assemble this little project and then I'll show you the code uh, that's involved and then bring it all together. So for this project, we're using our standard Arduino Uno board, like we use for most projects, and we're actually using the standard uh, Ethernet shield from Arduino itself. So this is the Ethernet shield that you can purchase from Arduino.cc. Uh, now, with as with many of these different products, there are clone boards out there. So this is a sane smart board, and as you can see, there's a little bit of difference between the two. So if you're going to do something like try to build a little web server, like I am, just realize if you're dealing dealing with a different uh, Ethernet shield, you may run into some, some different issues that you have to deal with. So the shield that I am using is the actual reference model that comes from Arduino. So all we do here is we just uh, line all this up, slot these together, and then that's that's our little package. So this is our little web server. Then we've got our little micro SD. So we've got the micro SD, and we can simply slot that into the back. And there we go. This is going to be our little Arduino web server for the project. So let's go over and take a look at the code. 
So before we take a look at the Arduino sketch, let's take a look at the micro SD card and the HTML file that we're going to be saving there. So the first thing to realize is that the Ethernet shield is not able to read the NTFS file system, the APFS file system, or even the XFAT file system. It can only read the FAT file system, so FAT16 or FAT32. Now, if you're using a micro SD card that you've, that you've put into any kind of modern camera or or camcorder, it will most likely have formatted your micro SD card to XFAT. So you can put the index.htm file onto an XFAT uh, micro SD card, but the Ethernet shield will simply not be able to read any of that. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, if you're using Mac, uh, we're going to go to the disk utility. Uh, if you're using Windows or Linux, you would do the version over there. And basically we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to disk utility, open this up, and we're going to take a look at the file system for untitled. So we can see untitled, and we can see this is ms.fat32. So that is what we want. If this says something else, especially if it says xfat, which is what it will most likely say, all you would do is you would format, or if you're on Mac, you would erase, and then you make sure that you make the MS-DOS FAT file system the one that you select. So again, this is one of those that, that can be very difficult. You're like, oh, it has XFAT. Let me just go through here. And if you fat finger it or you go through too quickly, you'll put the Mac OS extended or whatever journaled uh, file system onto the micro SD card. And then the, uh, the Arduino still simply won't be able to read it. So one way or the other you do have to format the micro sd card for fat uh, then past that we can go and we can take a look at the code uh, that is on the uh i hate to say code are you allowed to say code tags html i don't know Let's take a look at the HTML that's on the index. Uh, so we're going to call this index.htm. And so we are actually going to reference this name within the Arduino script uh, sketch. So if you change this to a different name, then you just have to change that name in the sketch. Uh, but let's take a look at this. And as you can see, you know, we're right here, where I'm just using crappy old uh, standard HTML. P, strong, strong is bold. Hey, look, a web page, sir, from an Arduino, close, strong, close. P. Here's a list. Uh, open unordered list. First list item, second list item, third list item. Close, 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 and then close unordered list. Then we use H2. Here's a picture embedded from the web. Close H2. Again, I'm using the image uh, SRC tag uh, and grabbing, I just grabbed a random ass picture off of failnormal.com. And then we go down below that. H2. Here's an embedded, embedded video. And with this, I simply use the iframe. Uh, the, the iframe embed script that you can grab for, from a YouTube video. And so this is what we are going to be presenting as the website. Yes, it's ugly. Yes, it's nasty. Yes, it looks like crap. I'm just, I'm just trying to explain to you how this stuff works. If you want to make something look nicer, you go ahead and do something, make something look nicer. I just want to show you uh, that, that this is going to be able to deliver this HTML code. And the important thing too, uh, when you're dealing with Arduino, is you'll notice that this is just the stock standard HTML code. So we've done projects in the past where the Arduino has dynamically written HTML uh, for us. And with that, you have to use escapes and you have to format things properly to, so that the Arduino can actually deliver it. The nice thing about being able to read off of a micro SD card is you can just simply do this as HTML. There's no additional escapes. There's no additional weird ass formatting that you have to deal with. The, uh, the Arduino will simply read from the file and send that over to the web browser. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the Arduino code itself. Uh, so we have this, uh, this code. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is add these three libraries. So we have the SPI library, the Ethernet library, and the SD. Uh, uh, library. So we need these libraries in order to make this work. Uh, and then we're going to have the MAC address. Uh, so again, the MAC address is the, the unique identifier for your, your, your Arduino device on the network. Um, now, do realize if we're going to do projects like this, if you only have one, if you only have a single uh, Arduino device on your network, you can just copy and paste this MAC address. Uh, this MAC address doesn't really matter if you only have a single device on the network. Where you may run into problems, if you have multiple Ethernet uh, uh, Mac, uh, Arduino devices on the network, you don't want to just copy and paste uh, this, this MAC address because then they'll all be seen as the same device as far as the network is concerned and you can run into some big problems. So basically MAC addresses are used in something called ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. So Address Resolution Protocol maps IP addresses 
two MAC addresses. So they're supposed to be they're supposed to be globally unique MAC addresses, and then you can assign an IP address to them. So a MAC address is kind of like a social security number as far as network devices are concerned. So just remember, if you're having multiple of these devices on your network, see what the MAC address is. There, there should be a sticker on the bottom of your Ethernet shield, um, and then plug in the individual MAC addresses. So anyways, then we're going to go down. Uh, we're going to create the Ethernet server uh, reference. So we're going to call this server, and it's going to be on port 80. So we can call server, and it'll be port 80. Then we are going to create the file. So we're going to have a file, and that file is going to be called web page. So that's going to be the, the file that we're going to be grabbing from the micro SD card. And then we're going to go down, and we are going to set up the environment. So the first thing that we're going to do is ethernet.begin. And then this is where we feed the MAC address from up here. Then we're going to do server.begin. So this uh, starts that server service for us. And then serial.begin 9600, this starts the serial monitor. And so the serial monitor is going to be important for us, especially in troubleshooting, because the first thing that it's going to do is tell us what the hell the IP address is of our Arduino device. Again, since we're only feeding the MAC address here, it's going to grab an IP address from DHCP. And so if we're going to go to it, as a web page, we need to figure, know what the IP address is. So serial.println, ethernet.localIP, so this function returns what the IP address is, and it will print that out on the serial monitor. Then here, all of this stuff in here, what this is for is this is for making sure that the SD card is working. So this is one of those things that you can just copy and paste, serial.println, initializing SD card. If not SD begin for, there's an error, uh, success, so else, success, SD card initialized, if not uh, exists. So what, this is where we're going to be putting in what the name of the HTML file is. So if you're going to change the name of the HTML file to something else, default.htm, htm, bob.htm, whatever else, this is one of the places you would plug that in. So it's going to look for that. Um, if it uh, if it doesn't exist, it's going to print, I can't find the file. If it does ex exist, it's going to print success found the file. Then we're going to go down and we're actually going to take a look at the loop. Uh, the first part of this, again, like most of this stuff, is kind of copy and paste uh, with the whole the connection to the Ethernet client. Uh, Ethernet client, client equals server.available. If there's a client, uh, while client is connected, while client is available, HRC, client read, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so this here, we're just gonna basically just copy and paste this. This is for the connection. Where we get to the interesting part for us today is just this little bit, this little bit right in here, right? So this is where we actually read from the micro SD card and read the information from the micro SD card and print that out to the web browser. So a web page, so we created that file, right? That file variable up here called web page. So web page equals sd.open, so the sd.open function, and we are going to open index.htm. So again, this is one of those places where if you change the name of that HTML file, you would change that here. So we're going to open index.htm, and web page is going to equal that. If web page, so basically if web page exists, while web page is available, and it's kind of interesting here. This is a curious little function. So client.write. So client, the client is the web browser. So the web browser that is connected to the Arduino, we are going to essentially write to the web browser webpage.read. So what's going to happen is this function here is going to read the file uh, that's on the micro SD card. And as it's reading it, it's pumping out uh, what it reads uh, to the uh, to the web browser. So it's kind of like just the man in the middle, like, okay, this is what I read, this is what I read, this is what I read, this is what I read. And then once it gets finished, web page uh, dot close. And so again, what's nice about this is you notice as far as the HTML code is concerned, you don't have any weird funky stuff with the HTML code. You don't have to escape anything. It is just going to read. It's going to purely read from the file uh, and spit it out to the web browser. Then you're going to have a break. And then you're going to have a lot of this copy and paste stuff again, you know, if if C equals new line, else if blah, 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 delay one client dot stop. The main thing in here that you're going to be dealing with and worrying about uh, is this part in here. And again, you may change that index dot HTML. Uh, so with that, let me uh, upload the code to the uh, to the Arduino and put the micro SD card in and I'll show you how this works. 
Okay, so here I've plugged in the uh, plugged in the Ethernet cable. I plugged plugged in the USB cable, so this will give us power and will give us a serial monitor. Again, do remember if you give this device a static IP address, you don't have to then plug this into a computer at all. You can simply plug this into a wall outlet or plug this into a, a uh, USB wall outlet type thing and have it entirely powered on its own, so it can just be sitting in a corner. And then we have our little micro SD card slotted in up there. So with that, let's go to the computer. We'll go to tools. We'll go to serial monitor. We'll see what this gives us. Okay, and so we have our IP address, so 10.0.1.14. We have the initializing SD card, success and success. Uh, so this is a good way to make sure that the SD card is actually being seen and then that the file is found if you're having any problems. So then all we're going to do is we're going to do a control C and then we're going to go to Google Chrome and we're going to open this up and well, wow, isn't that cool? So basically, this is a web page that is being presented entirely from our Arduino, right? So, hey, look, a web page served from an Arduino. Here's a list. Oops, here's a list. Uh, here's a picture embedded from the web. So this is a picture that's embedded from uh, failnormal.com. Here's an embedded video. And so we have a little embedded video from YouTube. And so that's the basic that you have. Now I know it's ugly, it's ugly, but the point that I'm trying to, to, to give you is that this can be done. If you wanna make something that looks nice, you can plug in your CSS and do all the pretty stuff and format it. But this just shows you that this does in fact work and is being uh, presented from, from a simple Arduino. So that's that's basically what there is uh, to, to making a little web server using your Arduino. So now you know how to turn your Arduino into a teeny tiny little web server. It's one of those things. Would I do it in the real world? It depends, it depends, right? So if I only had a couple of different clients that would be communicating with this, Maybe that would make a little sense. Uh, things like digital displays, that type of thing. Maybe I would do that. If I had very, very simple projects, maybe I would do that. If I had security concerns, where again, I had a simple project and I wanted something that couldn't be hacked the way a Raspberry Pi could, uh, then I might do that. But generally, generally, this is just kind of one of those, you know, neat dog tricks, neat Arduino tricks. Now go use a real computer to do it better. Uh, because the important thing to understand here is, again, you can't use any client side uh, server languages, PHP, Ruby, any of that kind of thing. You can't use anything like databases, MySQL database, MariaDB, anything like that. Essentially, you can use this to present HTML, CSS, JavaScript, that type of deal. Um, and that's about it. You can, you can can present images from the micro SD card uh, but again that gets a little bit more convoluted um, and yeah you would probably be better off with a Raspberry Pi one of the things I will say with that Mac address is if you buy the standard um, again the the actual uh, Ethernet shield from Arduino there is a sticker on the back and the sticker on the back gives you the Mac address for this specific device uh, so if you're wondering what the Mac address should be if you buy the, the reference uh, Ethernet shield, uh, there should be a sticker on the back to tell you what it is. And so, uh, and so, yeah, that's that's really all there is to it. Again, the the, the one of the big things uh, to be careful about is make sure that your micro SD card is formatted FAT, not XFAT, but FAT. Um, if it's formatted as XFAT, it simply will not be seen. Um, and otherwise, it's kind of a little interesting thing to to play around with. Again, you can try to see how sophisticated you could make a website using one of these. If you use things like iframes, other things, maybe multiple files, uh, I think you might be surprised about how complex a site you can create. It's just going to take a lot of energy and a lot of time. And there's, there's a lot better ways to do it. But, you know, hey, if, if you want to create a web server using an Arduino, at least now you know how to do it. So as always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you on the next one.